let's talk about Super Mario Brothers. Uh, NES, NES game. Yep, or Famicom if you're from Japan. Yes, yes. So, what, from what I understood, uh, you can clear, you can clarify things if I'm misunderstanding anything. This released in Japan in September 1985, and it came out about a month later in the United States. It's very complicated because we don't know the exact date when it came out in the U.S. But I always think it came out like the fall of 85, 1985. Yes. And 1987 in Europe, surprisingly. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I did read about that. Okay. And, yeah, I was reading through an article I was mentioning that the local Mario was mainly because of the graphical limitations of the NES. Um, a lot of things they had to change, such as the brown shirt. That kind of went to waste. Uh, now they kind of they kind of go back to it, revisit the brown shirt, just for nostalgia purposes. Do you think is that correct? Yeah, mostly it's. Yes. Yeah, okay. uh, I mean, the the the, the more uh, traditional look of Mario, the coloring, it kind of started with Mario Two USA, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So. Or lost levels, depending on like which source you're talking about. But yeah, or even Donkey Kong to an extent, but that one's a little different. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I read a, a little, a uh, little snippet that uh, when uh, Miyamoto wanted to create Bowser, it wasn't necessarily trying to be a turtle at first. No, it was trying to be like the ox from the movie called. Um, oh, I already forgot the name of the movie. It's um, it's from an old Japanese uh, '60s uh, animated movie. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, there's a lot of interesting tidbits, a lot of things that were carried on to, you know, the future of Mario games. But first, before we get started, I want to know how many times have you played this game? A lot. I've played the game so many times before. But I mean, it's funny because the first time I played it wasn't even the NES version. My first, the first version I played Super Mario Brothers was the uh, the Super Mario All Stars version of that game on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. So that was my that was my first exposure to Super Mario Brothers. Okay. The and how old, how old were you? Hmm? How old were you? I was I think four or five years old. God damn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I was four or five years old when I first played. That was one one of my earliest games to play because my my cousin had to, he had the Super Nintendo, and you know he we 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 played that version. That's how I was introduced to Super Mario Brothers, The Lost Levels, Mario Two USA. And uh, Mario Three, so those were the first versions I played of those games. Okay, and that was around the same time I played Mario World, also, because he he had Mario World. So, okay. So my question is, well, I you know I've only I've only played it once, and that was yesterday, and I beat it yesterday. So my question is, when you were that little kid, did you beat it? Did you beat the game? Oh God, no! I never beat any of the games. I, I mean, the closest one I almost did beat was Mario World, but again. I wasn't. I I never was able to beat it. Yeah. I was, but I never. I was never able to beat it. Do you know when was the first time you defeated Super Mario Brothers? Uh, the any. I don't know. I don't know if I ever beaten the All Stars version, but the NES version I beat it eight years ago. Eight years ago. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. First time I only beat the game, and I played the NES version like in two thousand in two thousand one because my, my other cousin he he had the NES. I've always experienced a lot of NES games, and Mario Brothers was one of them. And okay. Yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, Super Mario Brothers is one of those games where I'm pretty sure everybody just knows what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It is, yeah, of course. It's one of the most famous games, uh, you know, ever. Like, you know, right down from the gameplay, and even, you know, the famous theme song. Yeah, and it, has, it now has the most iconic character... A video game, you know. Arguably, I don't know if he is the most iconic. One of the most iconic, because you can yeah. argue Pac-Man for older generations and. Yeah. Peak, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, the reason why I asked you that, if you, if you were able to defeat it as a kid, is because I cannot imagine someone, a kid, beating, beating this game. Like unless he. He has to play it for you know weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks because the game can be very unforgiving, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they had the um, oh no, Nintendo Power didn't come out until '88, so they probably have to use 
you have to ask friends for it. Yeah, yeah. And right. so I made a list again, you know, the things that I didn't like about the game and things I loved about the game. Mm-hmm. And I want to go to those lists, to that list again. And the thing is, I tried to be forgiving because, you know, it is any game, right? Yeah. The game's okay. older than me. Actually, before we start that, um, yeah. it, it is one of those games that's responsible for bringing back popularity video games to the West. Because mm-hmm. there was... A- there was a crash in 1983. The crash wasn't like as big as like some people claim it to be. It's just that it was kind of losing its popularity as 1983 rolled around. Between mm-hmm. 82 and 85, it was just there were still we still had you know video games, but there, it, it's just the popularity was just slowing down. Not in Japan, of course, but because by, by the time 83 rolled around, they they got the Famicom. So. Yeah. Okay. And- and that's that's also something I try to do. That when I'm sitting down on the couch playing this game, I played it on the Switch, both in handheld mode with the Joy Cons and with the Pro Controller undocked. Um, mm-hmm. I always try to put myself back in that era and say, mm-hmm. how how would people react to playing this game for the first time on the NES? Oh man, they would not know how to react because a game like that was, you know, platformers. We already have platformers, but one like Super Mario Brothers was. Very, very different. Yes, yes, that, that's what I imagined, and I imagine like a young kid, like he kind of struggling with the first world, but it is something so different, so amazing. You know, so. But the first level was intended to be a tutorial, and I think it's one of the best ones they ever done. Like, the first level is so well, like, well designed, because it, it, at first you you start off with the Goomba ch- hitting you, like, going coming after you, and you're. You're going to die first. Obviously, you're going to die to the Goomba first if it's your first time playing the game as a little kid. Yes. Yeah. I I do remember watching a small interview with Miyamoto where he explained that that was the whole purpose of the first level. Like, uh, So you can understand basically almost every concept in the game. There's an enemy, you jump, you hit the blocks, you can jump on top of the blocks, and there's pipes. There's pipes. You can go on the pipes. You know, you find your chrome, your flower, your star man. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't know if, if I'm mistaken with this, but there's no... You can beat the level without running, so it doesn't really necessarily teach you about running, but you pick that up yourself, right? You, you have to pick that up yourself, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, how could you not, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I did. I do remember that interview with me and Mo. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, and- yeah. And they still try to do that to to this day with every Mario game. Yeah, and Super Mario Bros. Um, actually have physics because a lot of platformers before then had you know they didn't have proper physics. This one did. Mm. Now, what well, kind of we're talking about? Because that's one of the things I hated about this game. <laughs> well, okay, so a lot of old platformers, yeah, there was no momentum whatsoever. You just moved and jumped, but without any like actual physics or momentum going with you. Yeah. So that was one of the things that that game... You, you see, uh, that was different, but it was good because it's not like a game where you t- you turn to zero to 100 or no, like, momentum physics whatsoever. So Super Mario Bros. felt like a game where, you know, obviously when you, when you don't run, you're just slow. But when you do run, you're actually getting some speed. You know, something you like jump that. Yeah. You jump further. Um, yeah. yeah. yeah you, uh, Mega Man, the first game, that game has momentum base, but it was weird in that game because it was, it was clearly that game was trying to emulate Super Mario Brothers. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of platformers clearly got the idea from this game in terms of, like, how physics works when you run or not run. Yeah. yeah. Because anything before that was just really, really weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, since you run physics, that's literally the first thing on my list that I did not like about the game was the physics. Um and of course, uh, I always try to be very forgiving. But yeah, some of these things, physics, like they were just pretty annoying. The hitboxes and stuff like that, it was just annoying to deal with at times because I've been so spoiled with modern gaming. But I can see it being even a bigger downfall or even a bigger detriment, especially because you only have three lives, you know. And and it's like I lost a lot of lives due to the physics. And the thing is, uh, the game yeah. you can run fast, but this is one of the games where I recommend not doing that too often. 
yeah, 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 yeah. There was many times where I wanted to throw my controller to the TV. Yeah, but I always think the game itself, most of the time when you die, it's mostly your fault. But I, I never got that the game was cheap enough to to kit, to make it that it, it was the game's fault. Most of the time, I mean, I mean, there's a, there are those couple cases where you get that, like maybe for example, like around the cheap cheap jumps at a very weird angle, or Lakito throws a, a spiny at a very awkward location. Yeah. Or make, a Hammer Brothers just jumps out of nowhere and you weren't expecting it. Yes, yes, yes. The Hammer Brothers, I know that their patterns. I do have a question about the Hammer Brothers. Well, not a question, but that is, that thing took away my life many times. Yeah. Not because, you know, unexpected jump or because he act, he hit me with a hammer like he's supposed to, I guess. It's because I was standing in one spot where I thought I was safe. No, and the hammer just looks like it's not gonna hit me, but it hits me. Yeah, the hammer bullets are all they're basically a lot of people's nightmares in that game. They were yeah. the real they're the true villains of the game. Yeah, what I, yeah, that's another thing on my list that I did not like. Um the the enemies is uh, the green Koopas with wings, those enemies yeah. were a nightmare. They yeah, they always spawn in weird lo- weird locations. Yeah, the Koopa Paratroopa, yes. Uh, Koopa Troopa, n- not a big deal. Like, well, okay. no, the par- the green paratroops and even the red ones, which there aren't that many, thankfully, but you yeah. know, the, par- the green paratroops, they're only annoying in World 8. Like, they're not, they're, like, the rest of the worlds, they're fine. But World 8 is where they're really evil, admittedly. Yes, okay. But yeah, like, most of the enemies were fine, you know, the spiny, the fireballs, the piranha plants, goombas. Even Lakitu was not a big deal. Like now, Lakitu is more annoying in the modern Mario games to me. Uh, the cheap uh, cheap were a little excessive sometimes. Uh, I don't think the cheats are that bad because they're kind of easy to telegraph for the most part. It's just, it's yeah. just the, the, the levels for your they are in. You have to run basically. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That, yeah, that, that's that's kind of what I picked up. And uh, Buzzy Beetle, not a big deal. Not a big Bullet Bill and the levels that they were in is kind of like. They, they were, there was a lot of those bills, but it wasn't hard to deal with, you know. Yeah. Uh, and the little blooper. The bloopers, it, yeah. It just, it just moved weird. That's what I felt. Yeah, I mean, they only they, they only move when you swim up. When you're slowing, when you're down, they just go down, but they don't swim yeah. up. Swim up. And, and they just kind of, like, float down if, you, if you're just down, if you're below them. Yeah, so you just, just got to find a way to trick them. Yes, yes, and I kind of picked that up, but it's kind of hard to do that when... The water it is. physics are kind of sketchy, you know. Yeah, the water physics are weird. Luckily, there's only two, lo- technically three levels, but there are only two full water levels, so it's not like you have to deal with it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the things I didn't like, like the physics, enemies. Another thing that happened on my list is that you cannot go back. Oh, uh, that, that's to be expected. That, that's just the limitation of the NES. Yes, okay, then I won't blame it. I won't blame the NES in that case, but yeah, yeah, it's a shame. You know, it would have been nice to have a a retry feature or something like that. that yeah, for your life. I do get that, but I, the 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 whole point of that game was, even though it's a home console game, I, I always got the feeling that it was still trying to be an arcade. Yeah, yeah, I thought that too. Yeah, yeah, because keep in mind that this was, uh, you know, arcades were still a thing, and you know that's why we have a point system in that game because, well, <laughs> arcade. Yeah. You just it's just, it's, it was just a thing at the time, so it may be new, but it does, it's not completely so new that it doesn't have the arcade feel to it. It clearly does. Because right. they cause they did make an arcade version a year later after the NES version. Mm-hmm. It, was called, it was called Versus Super Mario Brothers. And oh. it, it's funny because it's, it's on Switch. The Versus Super Mario Brothers arcade game is actually on Switch that you can download if you... Okay. Yeah, you should have told me. I, I could have tried it out. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, can't go back. I I won't blame you for that. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's, yeah. Like you said, I know. I knew the thing of hardware, not necessarily that they they're like, let's be evil, let's not allow them to go back. But yeah, I mean, before Super Mario Bros., what else can you, what can you do that's like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, another thing I didn't like, and this is kind of like the one where it's not like a hardware limitation. This is one that I'm very serious about and I, I was frustrated that I had to go to outside resources to solve this right 
I think it was level 7-4. Yeah, that one is a puzzle one. Yes, and I kind of picked it up. I kind of picked it up um, the first part. I was like, oh, okay, okay. Obviously, I'm just going in an endless run. It's just a matter of figuring out a puzzle. So I was like, okay, let's figure it out. You know, I could not figure out the second one. The second and one, yeah, the second one you have to go up first, then stay in the middle, and then yes. jump. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And so I didn't like that I had to go find a YouTube video about it. And at the time, if you're a little kid and you don't have a guide, then that little kid might not have a chance to ever finish that game. You know, and his friends, I can't uh, see Eventually, they eventually have to figure it out. I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think that area is so impossible that you'll never figure it out. Because that's what I did. I have to figure it out by myself. Yeah, but like that's um, if you're if you're a young child, it's like you only have so so many amount of lives that I think but, at this point you just put the game down and you go to beat them up and in that era, you know. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. I never I. I mean, it took me a while to figure it out. But the thing is with the level itself, it's not that dangerous. The game doesn't... Like, it, it's a maze, yes, but at least the level doesn't do put too many traps on you when you're in that stage. Because I, I think they knew that if you... they're gonna It's a maze, so you're going to have to figure out some parts. Okay, well, we're not going to put that many traps on you. We're just going to have you figure it out. Yes, yes. And I believe 8-4 is a, is a puzzle, too, right? It is, but that one's actually more innocent than 7-4. It is. It might, it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it has more enemies there, but I don't think the trapping is that bad because you only have so many options in that version, in that yeah. level. Yeah, yeah. That one was through trial and error. This one, 7-4, is was like, okay, I have no idea what to do. You know, at first, you have no idea what to do, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you think those... Maybe maybe I'm thinking crazy, but do they not give you hints? No, the the... The later versions, like All Stars, they give you like a chime noise to see if you got it right or wrong. Because New Super Mario Brothers has that too, like the chime noise. Depending right. if you got it right or wrong. So the only reason why I felt like I got it, maybe I'm thinking crazy again, but the only reason why I felt like I got it, seven that's for the first part, was because there was a little like design on the stage where it was like a ladder design. So I was like, okay, let me follow that design. Let me go to the bottom level, middle level, top level. Then, because that's what the ladder design kind of told told me. Yeah. You don't think that was the hint, or you think that was? I, I think that was. I think that was intentional right there. Going, oh yeah, I actually never thought of that. Like yeah. you're going, then going down, but you got to stay in the middle in the second part. Yeah, yeah, and then go to the yeah. So I kind I kind of picked that up, you know, but I could not figure that out for the second portion. But um, yeah. Other than that, you know, those, I, I don't even I, I, I figured it out easily, you know. I was still able to yeah. beat the game within hours, you know. And to be fair, that's only that one level that does that. Well, besides World 8-4, but those are like the only levels that do that. It's not like you have to do it for every part of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just one boring puzzle and boom, you get, you get by. Yeah. Um, yeah, to be fair, Super Mario Bros., but besides World A, where I think it does a huge difficulty spike, I think the game is fairly challenging. I don't think it's that hard. Yeah. I think it's fair for its difficulty. Because I feel like the levels, each time you progress, it does get harder, and as it should be. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, another thing on my list on hate it. Well, by hate it, I don't mean that, you know, I hate this game. It just means, like, it, it, it bothers me a little bit. I yeah. Think. Um, the amount of lives that you start with. Uh, you, oh, you're you spoiled. No, that's not, that's not that's not the game's fault. That's just you being spoiled. Come on, give me 10 minimum. No, dude, okay, you're, now you're being spoiled. Come on now. The other games give you five lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was a small complaint. I guess, you know, another... That's not, that's not the game's fault. That's just you. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, I'll take that as my fault, but... The game could have told me how many lives I had. I, I would I didn't have to die for it to tell me how many lives I had. I, I think put it in the top right corner or something, you know. Uh, again, you're spoiled because that's how arcade games did it. <laughs> or it or unless they had like a, a little clue, like Pac Man, you can only see at the bottom right when you're playing, but you wouldn't notice it until you play it a little bit. But yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that's kind of an arcade thing. Okay, okay. 
Okay. It's just that I don't buy often, so you know. I don't yeah. Know how many I have, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's there is a glitch where, you know, the Koopa Shell uh, kick glitch and other yeah. games. Yeah, you can do it in this game too. Although it's harder to pull off, you can actually do it, and do it, that was intentional, by the way. Mm, okay. okay. You can do it. It's harder to pull off, but I have done it, and you know, once you do it, you know, you're 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 all good. Trust me on that. Okay. I did see a couple of glitches for this game, which I didn't want to try out, but. Oh I, yeah, the glitch, the glitches are fun to pull off. Yeah. 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 Okay. The most yeah. famous one is the um, minus world glitch. The minus world glitch is very famous too. Oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah. yeah you, I, did, I, did I, don't, I forgot to pull it off, but I think it's in the second stage uh, of World War Two, where uh, you, have, you have to jump at the right moment and duck, and you clip through the area, and you go to the pipe section, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it kind of glitches into the pipe section, yeah. Yeah, and then you go to the mi- minus world, which basically... you. It's it's not possible to beat it. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, yeah. Another thing I have on my list is the uh, the fire power. Oh, the fire flower. Yes, and it's kind of like I guess they call it fiery Mario uh, here. So if you take damage, you go back to the small Martin. That was yeah. Uh, I mean, again, it's because you're spoiled. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I, I never felt safe. Usually with, you know, the modern, modern games, you felt safe like, when you have another power-up, you know. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just a small a small thing that they added later on. No big deal. Um, I mean, it's the first game, so we, all those stuff you're mentioning, again, they do it better in the later games, so I can, I can forgive it for those. You see, and that's one of those things that if I go back in that time period, I wouldn't be complaining about some of these things. Like, I wouldn't even know... I wouldn't even be complaining about the firepower, firepower, you know, because I would say, you know, it's cool that I can throw fire. And if I take damage, you know, I take damage. I go back to small Mario, big whoop. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm spoiled now, you know. Um, yeah. But I do have another complaint about the items that they weren't enough, enough items. They weren't enough one-ups. They weren't enough fire, fire, firepower uh, power-ups. You're not looking. That's because you're not trying to find them. That's why. <laughs> you oh. You... The game because there's a lot of hidden little goodies in the in, in the game and you have to find them, dude. Like there, there's also vines, you know, the the, the vine beanstalks. Yeah, you can find them. They're hidden, by the way. But you mm. you say that like, well, that's because you have to play the game enough to find them. Oh, okay. Okay, because sometimes I felt like I was going through the levels as small Mario way too often, you know. And you have to explore, dude. That's yeah. that's sort of the point. Of, that that's why there are. That's why, like, a lot of games have a lot of hidden stuff. That's because this game started started that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, and as a, that's the thing that I have in my things that I love list is the secrets, but we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much it. I guess another thing I have to mention is the, the coins. I noticed, and it's not really something I don't like about the game, I don't know what exactly they were going for here. But for example, there was one stage where I was running and the coins were kind of acting as indicators. They kind of always do act as indicators. Um, That's what I feel like. Anyway. And I was running, 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 and I followed the indicators. If it tells me to jump, I jumped. But in this one stage, I jumped while I was running and I got the perfect, you know, coin. I got the coins perfectly. I landed right in front of the enemy. The enemy killed me, right? So I was like, okay, is that indicator trying to trick me into facing the enemy and killing me? Or what, what is that indicator doing? Um, because there is no way that I was going to get to the coin and land on top of the enemy to kill him. You know? oh, it's possible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, I guess it's more probably probably small, if you're small Mario, yeah, because small Mario can jump higher than big Mario. Oh, that would be nice to know but. Okay. You didn't know that? Come on, dude. It's so obvious. <laughs> yeah, because I was mostly just small Mario. That, that's the issue, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Small Mario. Small Mario is actually easier to speed run because he 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 can jump he can jump higher and he's I don't know if he's faster, but I think the speed is the same. But the difference is that the jump is he's lighter than when he's bigger. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Um, that's not really something they continued with, uh, or is that is that right? Like, do they still do that where small Mario jumps higher? Yeah, like if you if um, because there's some sections where if you want to find some goodies, 
something with a big Mario, you, you can reach, but it's harder to do. So it's easier to just eat small Mario and just get to those like those hidden blocks or those hidden goodies that you want to find. Okay. 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 So before I move over to the things that I liked about the game, do you have anything that you didn't like about the game that I didn't mention? I doubt it, but uh, I mean, that's kind of minor for me. Uh, I think uh, World Eight's too difficult. Like it's like the difficulty. Uh, I think I feel like the Skyrock rock is a little too too high. Uh, mm-hmm. in World because I feel like up until World Eight, the difficulty was fair, but up until World Eight, it gets a little too hard because there are no checkpoints in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah, World Eight was pretty tough. Yeah, that's that's probably the world that got me the most. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the world I always die to. Like, it, might, it, it takes me like two hours to beat the game. Those those last hour is basically World Eight. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, and I beat the game in about three or four hours, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We won't we won't talk about more into details on that. But okay, any anything else that you didn't like about the game? I guess. Um, I mean, I can forgive it because it's kind of like the first game. But the var- variety of worlds could have been a little better. Obviously, the later games did a better job. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, much better, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, uh, I wish I a little you, think more you, think you wanted more uh, more desert levels, more water levels, more of everything? More traditional, yeah. Well, quote-unquote yeah. traditional. We, we, there was no tradition of Mario at this time, so. Yeah. yeah. I, the, the concept of water levels did exist back then. I think they could have added more, a water world or something like that, but... I guess they kind of they kind of knew it wasn't as good as the land bubbles or I mean in general they I guess now they kind of embrace that water levels are kind of annoying. They um, are that's what they and they keep bringing them back. Yes, yes, and I don't know. Yeah, that's how I view water levels. Just, just get by, and we'll get to the fun part, you know. And yeah. 3D Mario, I never complained about the water water levels or water. Oh, levels, oh man, you never played Mario 64. <laughs> Or Mario Galaxy. Um, yeah, I mean, Sunshine is like, it's not bad. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, Sunshine is bad in the platforming portion. They could be annoying, but... No, Sunshine, you, Sunshine is annoying as 2D Mario. Why the controls in Sunshine are just not... They're worse than 64s, but I'll we'll get to that game eventually. Yeah, we'll we'll get to it eventually. Yes. I know we'll um, Okay, anything else before we move on to the good? No, I have no, I have no complaints. But there's just like difficulty spike in the world, um, yeah. Yeah. in the world. What that is. Okay, okay. The good. I mean, obviously, this kind of gave rise. I mean, I know Mario existed before this, but this kind of gave rise to one of the best, you know, one of the best selling franchises of all time. You know? Yeah, um, and this game at the time was the best selling game of all time. Forty million. And, and what overtook it was it Wii Sports. Yeah, I think we sports over took it um, several yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Out of all the games, that'd be Wii Sports. Yeah, what that mm. To yeah. be fair, Super Mario Bros. was also a pack in game. Mm, I don't know initially, but later on it was. Yeah, I think it wasn't as common as the Wii Sports, though. I think it, it was it was for a certain amount of period, but not almost all of the Wii. Eh. It, it's, it's, that's a difficult conversation. You know. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, Super Mario Bros. Yeah, for many regards, it's, it's a very influ- influential uh, influential game, and it oh, definitely uh, yeah, it is. In terms of platformers, God, the first level, you, um, the Yuji Naka, one of the one of the creators of Sonic or the creator of Sonic, he he played World One One a lot. Then he got the idea for Sonic. Wow, because he yeah. played he played the game really fast, so he's like, hey, what if I make a game you know based on speed? Yeah. There you go. Well, I, I, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I know World War. I mean, World One Dash One is like extremely iconic, you know. And yeah. a lot of these games take a similar formula, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, just the platformers that kind of set the standard. Yeah, Super Mario Bros. is the one that basically sets the standard for platformers. Like you can even tell just by the design alone. Yeah, yeah, and so, so many platformers. Like it's, yeah. it, it is the video game that. You know, most people will talk about terms of like long lasting appeal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, another thing that I like, um, uh, and I was very forgiving with it and I enjoyed it, um, is the music. The music caters to each level. And even though there's not a big variety of music, it's just like, you know, if you're playing the castle stage, 
you, you know what song you're gonna hear, and it's kind of addicting. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like the music, the sound effects. Um, I mean, they're iconic yeah. sound effects, like the coin sound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not just using video games now, but yeah, very, very iconic. I yeah, I enjoy the music. You know, yeah. And, music is. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, we, there's nothing to say about it because there's just that famous. The water level theme. Underground theme, is both, you know, I love the underground theme. It's so catchy. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. The famous one, the the world one one theme, the the main theme of Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I I love I love it. Um, I saw right here in an article or interview where Koji Kondo says that he has two specific goals for his music. Um, one goal was to convey an unambiguous sonic image of the game world. And another goal was to enhance the emotional and physical experience of the gamer. And it Which, yeah, I did. Yeah, he, he achieved his goal. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy the music. And especially for that time period, I can imagine it was like, it, it was great music. It was addicting. It, it made the game feel more lively. Oh, um, yeah. The, this, this is the case where I'm not sure about other games before, but this one, music did really enhance the experience. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, very good. And and then um, another thing I have on my good list is the secrets. Uh, okay. I I personally did not know about any secrets going into this game. Mm-hmm. But I played other Mario games, and I played Super Mario World with you. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was like, okay, that that place at the top looks like you can go there. And I feel like there's something there. You know, maybe maybe some coins or something. You know, and I ended up finding, you know, three pipes, and I'm like, okay, cool. You know, so after you find one secret, you kind of always look out for another secret, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I do. That's kind of the start of secrets for Mario games, and I'm sure many games follow suit in general oh, with secrets. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Kirby's one of them. Donkey Kong's also one of them too. Yeah. 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 And yeah, they get addicting and they kind of make the game more replayable, you know, especially at the time, you know, when games were so limited, they were so short. Um, yeah. 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 You kind of want to replay the games and see like, okay, let me, I didn't find anything for this stage. Let me see if I can find something going back, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, the thing I like about the game, personally, when I play Mario Maker 2, this is my favorite art style. Okay, it's my favorite physics. I I love the way they game this art style plays on Mario Maker Two, and I do like how the game looks as well on the NES. I love yeah. the art style. Yeah. It's very colorful. Like everything pops out, and Mario pops out as well. Yeah, yeah. the art style for everything. You know, even Bowser looks kind of cute. Um, <laughs> yeah, the mushrooms look. You know, they pop out. Uh, the Starman. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's cute, one up mushroom, everything. Everything it looks looks amazing to me. I, I love the way it looks, especially for you know, nineteen eighty five. Um yeah. Yeah, I I don't have any complaints about the art style. It's a bit, I wouldn't mind if they you know, Nintendo you know, continued working with this art style, but you know, with Mario Maker two, they let the fans do it for them, you know. Um Yeah. Yeah. And I I'm yeah. glad it's a Mario Maker two. I'm glad it brought Many other great stages in Mario Maker 2 that I, I get to enjoy. Yeah. Well, not just Mario Maker. They also brought, you know, the 2D sections in Odyssey, which is based on this game. Yeah. Yes. And, I, yeah, I love that as well. I love playing 2D sections, you know. And, and th- that's a nice touch that Nintendo did in Odyssey, you know. Um, yeah. 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 And, uh, before Super Mario Brothers, you know, we had... Uh, Mario was already, like, a character before that. Like, in terms of... Well, his name wasn't even Mario when he first started. He was just Jumpman in the first Donkey Kong game and Donkey yeah. Kong Jr. Yeah, I, I didn't read about that. He was Jumpman, you know, and great. I mean, he he wouldn't have taken off as he did, but being called Jumpman, you know, yeah. that was a perfect name, you know. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then there was the ar- other arcade game, Mario Brothers, where Luigi first appeared, which you know, you just all you do, you're in a pipe and just, you know, jump on like the the little. Uh, line platforms, jump on it, and have the enemies like fall over and then just kick them. A simple little game, but you know, one oh. little. But of course, you know, more, it, the series got 
move forward with Super Mario Brothers, the one that got even more famous. You know, even though Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. and Mario Brothers were already successful enough in the arcades, you know, I think the series got skyrocketed more in the home console industry uh, with the with this game. And yeah, it's amazing how much the series has grown since then. Yeah, I know. I know. Like I'm looking at the timeline of Mario. Um, yeah, you know, just uh, just seven years later, it would be Super Mario World, and it's like. That again is one of the most iconic games of all yeah. time. That game, to me, that game aged well. I don't think this game aged as well, um, but I, I forgive it. It's the first Mario 2D Mario platforming game, and um, it paved yeah. way for everything else. Like, you know, yeah. I forgive it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I but mean, to me, we we eventually gonna we're, we're gonna talk about Super Mario. World. I want to beat it on my own. I know we beat it together, but I'm gonna go back on my own. We can't, we can't, we cannot ignore the other games before Mario World, though. We okay. get, we gotta try Mario Bros. Well, we're gonna play Mario Bros. 2 USA. Lost levels, that can wait. Cause that was Japan's, you know, real Mario Bros. 2. And arguably the real Mario Bros. 2, but personally for me, Mario Bros. 2 USA is the one that, you know, I feel like that one did more for the series than that, than Lost Levels. Yes, yes. And what I will do for those games is I'm not going to compare it to Modern Mario, but I'm finally going to be able to compare it to the original Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. And see, okay, what improved, what didn't improve, what went back, and, you know, make yeah. a difference for that. But yeah. um, I think one thing I was looking for when I was searching online for Super Mario Brothers, I was like, okay, let me see some reviews, let me see this. And I feel like nobody talked about the things they didn't like about this game. Um, I was watching YouTube videos, articles, and nobody really wanted to bash the game. They were very forgiving. It's like, you know, just call it an iconic game. So I wanted it to take, you know, initiative to just <laughs> to say something bad about the game because no game is perfect. Every game has its flaws, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, this whole list, I have to create it myself. Like, I, I didn't have any guidance in any way. Like, I people just love the game. That's it. It's a nostalgic game for them, and it's a perfect game for them. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's not to me. It's not nostalgic to me. So I, I kind of had the opportunity, and I will have the opportunity to attack almost all the Mario games, you know, without a bias view. Yeah, uh, which I love. Um, but in general, I enjoy playing the game. I, I love that I could beat it in one day, one sitting. Um, I know I wouldn't have been able to do that without internet. Um, Cheater. You're a cheater. Yeah. And you use safe space also. How dare you? We don't mention that, Mario. Oh, okay. sorry. Hey, <laughs> I have to... I, I beat the game on the original cartridge. I ain't, I ain't bother using... Okay, I say cartridge, but the one I have is the Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, Duck Hunt combo. So it's two games in one cartridge. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, so, I, don't have, I don't have the original original, which I want it because, you know, why not? <laughs> Oh, of course, of course, yeah. So one thing I, I I didn't want to mention I didn't want to mention the save points to you is that one thing I try to do is I try to be as careful as possible so I avoid using save points. Okay, and that that kind of like even being very careful like you're gonna die somehow you know to me, I mean in my opinion like oh yeah you're you're gonna no matter what <laughs> yeah whether you're running walking something's gonna get you and. You know, so I did have to rely on that every once in a while. I tried to limit it as much as possible, but that's a whole discussion to be had, you know, whether save points actually mean you're enjoying the game or you're playing the game to its full ability. But I beat every level myself. I got through the end. So, yeah, I still got to enjoy as much as, much as possible. There um, is a, a cheat where if you get a game over, I, I couldn't do it in mine because my my controller is, is, not, is, is not as good as it used to be, but... If you press, I believe it's, if you press A and B at the same time and press start, you'll go back to the world you died in. Mm. Yeah. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that. And there's also uh, well, a good thing I didn't tell you about this one, but uh, there is a pipe you can find that can take you to world 6, 7, or 8. Mm, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And now I was, I figured there was something, there was something it, like that, but I couldn't find it. It's in world 4 too, uh, the, the other pipe, the other underground level. It's like mm-hmm. after the elevator platform that goes down, there are these blocks, right? Yeah. Below them, there are hidden blocks. And if you hit the uh, block, like the, the clear block on the right side, you hit a beanstalk. And that beanstalk takes you up to the sky, uh, 
you know, to the ground or sky area. Mm-hmm. And there's these mushroom platforms. As you keep going right, you'll find um, those orange pipes, which, you know, label World 6, World 7, and World 8. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, I do plan on revisiting the game. I told you I wanted to speed run it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I obviously I'm making it close to the record, but I, if it can, if I can beat it in under 30 minutes, oh, why not try it? You know, um, yeah. And it, it will be a cool thing to show show off, you know. Uh, but we'll, I will get to that later eventually. Um, but for now, we're gonna continue covering Mario games, and we're gonna we're gonna see what game we cover next. But I, I want to try to cover Mario too, actually. Even okay. though I. That game is very hard, by the way, so don't expect it to be easier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. Okay. So any any last words on Super Mario Bros. 1985 NES? It's, it's still one of my favorite Mario games of all time. It's uh, I'd say it's probably like, yeah, it's top 10 Super Mario games for me. Okay. Like I, I really love this game a lot. Like It's just fun to go back and play the game. Like, I know the later games are better in some cases, but I just feel like this one is just, I don't know, it's just easy to go back and play, and it's very, very playable, even after almost 35 years later. Yeah, 35 years later. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Okay. My final thoughts are uh, good, fun, short game, Uh, but definitely not my top five Mario games, but I can see, I can see this the specialty of it. I can see how special it could be back then. You know, and I, I wasn't even born in the 80s, so I, I can't even, like, relate to that. So, But I, I can see the potential it had back then. And, yeah. But, I, it, I, yeah, I, I like... Did, mm-hmm. Where, where are you going No, no, I just said I liked it. That, that's my final thought. I liked it. You know, yeah, I, I, I played it, like, after... I played 60, Mario 64 and... I think I played Mario World first before. I, I, I know I said earlier I played... I don't remember if I played Mario World first before I played All-Stars. Mm-hmm. Or probably at the same time. I don't know. I don't remember, but... I know I played Mario 64 before Super Mario Brothers, so it's pretty interesting to go back from... Start from 3D and then 2D afterwards. Yeah. 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 But I did have a young age, so it didn't, it didn't bother me. I was like, hey, Mario, why not? Let's play some Mario. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this guy's named after me. You know, let me try, let me try him out. You know. Um... Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's it. That's Super Mario Brothers. We'll oh, see what next. Can I give you a fun fact? Can I what? Hey, can I give you a fun fact? Okay. Yeah, tell me. <clears throat> you know that um, Yoshi was actually a concept for this game? Oh, really? Mm. Like, well, it, 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 I mean, it never got through in the game because, you know, limitations. Yeah. But there's like early drawings, you see Yoshi, but it was it was like a I think it was a two or three headed uh, dinosaur. Mm-hmm. Right, and Mark writing it, I'm like, oh wow, that's interesting. But you know, of course, then that never came to fruition until like Mario World. So it's pretty cool that Yoshi was like one of the early concepts of um, this game in particular. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah, that that is very interesting. Well, yeah, and and I can imagine Yoshi would have been extremely limited in general. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, they kind of knew their limit. Miyamoto and uh, and Takashi Tezuka, um, like they knew their limitations. So those guys, like, they just knew like how, how to make a game that's you know, uh, you know appropriate for the co- the, the uh, console they made and how to make it uh, feasible for everybody. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Uh, we'll see what game we talk about next. You know, yeah. Uh, thank you for your time. We'll. Most of these games you've already played before. I'm experiencing them for the first time. Yeah, yeah. it's been it's, it's going to be a fun journey. I tell you, definitely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>